good morning students in last lectures we had seen the outline related with the fermentation technology and the different types of component used for the process of fermentation today we'll going to focused on the fermentation in manufacturing of antibiotics and vitamins production of antibiotics vitamins enzymes and alcoholic products is the main aim of the fermentation industry most pharmaceuticals are produced by the process of fermentation using specific microbial strains interest in utilization of antibiotic for therapy began in the year of 1929 when alexander fleming found that a mole penicillium had an effect against staphylococcus aureus Penicillin was the first antibiotic commercially produced from the Penicillium species by the process of fermentation. Its use in treatment of infections led to the invention of thousands of antibiotics. These antibiotics are mainly produced from the fungi, actinomycetes and bacteria etc. These substances have wide applications in medical, veterinary and agricultural practices. here we will going to elaborate on production of penicillin production of penicillin began in united states in year of 1941 by surface culture fermentation of penicillium notatum during the world war 2 penicillin producing fungi were studied extensively to increase the yield of penicillin nowadays penicillin is produced from penicillium chrysogenum by submerged culture technique penicillin is effective against gram positive bacteria and also some large viruses and rickettsia too natural penicillin that is penicillin v and penicillin g are effective against the several gram positive bacteria they inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis and destroy d cells Penicillin is easily hydrolyzed by enzyme B lactamase hence the natural penicillins are ineffective against the microorganisms that produce beta lactamase semi synthetic penicillins that are resistant to beta lactamase have been successfully used against a gram negative bacteria penicillin is a generic term applied to an entire group of antibiotics as far as inoculum development is concerned the strain were used is penicillium chrysogenum the selected strain of penicillium chrysogenum is maintained in the form of master culture and preserved by the lyophilization or by mixing the uh, spores in sterilized cell soils for inoculum preparation spores from working solid cultures are suspended in water these spores are added in flask containing nutrient solution and incubated for 4 to 6 days at 25 degrees celsius the resulting spores are used directly to inoculate inoculum tank the inoculum ta tank are incubated for 48 hours with agitation and aeration to grow more mycelium the resulting inoculum is used for production tank or it is added to a second or even third stage inoculum tank to produce more inoculum for large uh, uh, scale production as far as production medium is concerned the exact composition of the penicil penicillin production media used in the industry for the production of penicillin is unknown so these media are considered to be a trade secret of that particular fermentation industry so a typical medium described by the jackson in year of 1958 contains fermentable carbohydrates such as corn stiff liquor solids having concentration 3.5% lactose 3.5% and glucose 1% potassium dihydrogen phosphate 0.4% calcium carbonate 1% edible oil 0.4% and penicillin precursor 
the ph of this medium after sterilization is maintained up to 5.5 to 6 inoculum media are similar to production media except that lactose and precursors are not added in the inoculum medium as far as the large scale production of penicillin is concerned here in the uh, flow chart of this production um, uh, steps of penicillin which initially consist of the different types of uh, material or the precursor you can say which is used as lyophilized spores of the penicillium chrysogenum. The media are placed in the fermentation vessel sterilized and inoculated with a suspension of penicillin chrysogenum that is inoculum. If this flow sheet for the large production of penicillin is shows you the detailed uh, graphical representation uh, um, diagrammatic representation of the production of penicillin. The fermentation vessel is equipped with devices which allow continuous addition of nutrients, acids or base to maintain the pH 7 to 7.4 and cooling coils to maintain the temperature at 24 degrees Celsius. Maximum antibiotics are produced within 4 to 5 days. So at initially we have to use the lyophilized spores of the penicillin chrysogenum with the help of loop, we will have to maintain and transfer into the agar land and prepare the agar land culture. Thereafter, the, this agar land culture will have to transfer for shake flask culture. And apart from that, the shake flask culture will have to transfer this culture for the primary seed culture and secondary seed culture meanwhile. After preparation of the secondary seed culture, we will have to transport this broth to the fermentation tank by maintaining the concentration of acid, base and nutrients. After the particular cycle for the uh, point of time, the fermentation broth will have to we have to extract it from this fermentation tank and expose it for the filtration with the help of rotary vacuum. After successful filtration, this broth we have to expose it for the extraction purpose that is first extractor and meanwhile it it is uh, exposed for the uh, different types of DSP that is in situ DSP that is in situ downstream processing which consists of purification column. After purification we will have to once again expose it for the second and third extractor where you will get the purified extract. After purified extract extraction though the extraction has done perfectly here at this stage we'll have to once again expose it for the evaporator for the uh, cell debris evaporation or the some sort of solvent evaporation after successful evaporation we have to expose this broth for the crystal washing then ceramic filter and then after drying after drying, you will get the crystalline potassium penicillin G which is preserved and we have to expose it for the testing and packaging purpose. This yield of the penicillin is depend on the composition of the medium. Generally, the yield of penicillin is more than 60,000 units per ml in the fermentation broth. As far as recovery and purification is concerned, the first step in the recovery process is the removal of mycelium or cells by the filtration with the help of rotary vacuum filter or centrifugation. These stages are carried out under the aseptic conditions to avoid the contamination of filtrate with penicillinase producing microorganisms that is bacillus species which may cause the loss of antibiotics penicillin is extracted under the controlled condition of temperature ph sterility to minimize the chemical and enzymatic degradation it is extracted in the form of acid into amyl acetate methyl isobutyl ketone or butyl acetate in a counter current solvent extractor at ph near about acidic that is 2.5 to 3 
A penicillin containing solvent is treated with the active charcoal to remove the pigments and other impurities. The charcoal is separated from this extract on the pre-coated rotary vacuum filter and then wash with the help of solvent. This penicillin from the solvent is crystallized by the addition of sodium or potassium hydroxide to form its salt. The end product of the penicillin is then crystallized into the sodium or potassium penicillin. This penicillin may be passed through the gel filtration columns to separate and remove all contaminating proteins from medium. Procaine salt of penicillin may be prepared to modify the release that is slow release of drug in the body. Next is your streptomycin. Streptomycin was the first aminoglycoside antibiotic discovered by the Selman A. Waxman in the year of 1944 that is very active against the gram-negative as well as gram-positive organisms. The main use of this streptomycin is for the treatment of tuberculosis due to their strong activity against mycobacterium tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Streptomycin was the first antibiotic produced from the streptomyces genera, that is actinomycetes, from streptomyces griseus. One of the antibiotic producing strain of the streptomyces species, which will be depicted in the next figure. This streptomycin and dehydroseptomycin are basic compounds and they are usually prepared as salts. Streptomycin at high dosage may produce neurotoxic re reactions. So there are the different types of the production media and the nitrogen sources are being used. In case of production media, the carbon source as glucose, fructose, galactose, xylose, mannitol, lactose, starch and dextrin or glycine are being used. Nitrogen sources contain peptone, meat extract, glycogen, then soybean meal, corn steep liquor, casein hydroxylate and nitrates. So these are the different types of the uh, you can say the raw material which can be used for the production of streptomycin with the help of uh, uh, with the help of fermentation process. Not only this but also that there are the different types of growth stimulating compounds including factor A phenylacetic acid. Some antioxidants are also going to be used that is agar and sodium sulfide etc. Mineral salts and vegetable like mineral oil are also been used. The Merck's media that is glucose plus soybean extract plus sodium chloride have been used. As far as cards media is concerned it comprises the glucose along with peptone, meat extract and sodium chloride. Nonetheless, Rick and Dynovix media is also going to be used. As far as the uh, constitution of this Rick and Dynovix media is concerned, it comprises mainly the glucose, soybean extract and sodium chloride. Industrial media which include the glucose which having a 2.5% usage, soybean meal 4%, distillers bright soluble 0.5% and sodium chloride 0.25% are being used. As far as the production of this uh, streptomycin is concerned, the flow sheet of the production of the streptomycin which more concern or Im gives emphasis on the yield in the fermentation which respond strongly to aeration and agitation. The optimum fermentation temperature is in the range of 25 to 35 degrees Celsius and the optimum pH ranges is 7 to 8. The fermentation lasts approximately 5 to 7 days and the fermentation passes through the, there are, uh, the 3 different types of the phases. Likewise with the penicillin, the streptomycin also uh, shows its effect uh, or you can say the uh, flow chart which can be ex uh, depicted uh, for the um, production of the penicillin. First of all, we have to take the lyophilized culture of Streptomyces griseus. 
then we have to expose it for the agar plants slants for the preparation after agar slants has been prepared we, with the help of loop we have to take the culture from this slant and transfer it into the shake flask culture after the shake flask culture is ready this culture we have to transfer it for the seed vessel and meanwhile directly into the fermenter tank for the fermentation process after the fermentation process has been done we have to extract this broth and maintain the acidity uh, of this broth further so with the acidification technique we increased we can increase the acidity of this broth after acidification the filtration has been carried out after filtration we'll have to make it neutralize with the help of appropriate basic salts okay or the basic um, compounds after neutralization filtration or the clarification is really required after the clarification is done this broth we have to expose it for the cation exchange column for the appropriate separation of different types of the components from broth after separational technique this broth have to exposed for the uh, appropriate drying as well as the evaporation technique if or to avoid or uh, what we can say to uh, evaporate the different types of the organic solvents after evaporation and the drying the crystallization is carried out after crystallization we have to expose it for the vacuum oven for the appropriate drying after evaporation uh, with respect to the crystallization or followed by vacuum oven that is drying we have to uh, just expose this broth for the calcium chloride treatment and for the um, and the precipitation of the streptomycin chloride is takes place so we have to uh, what we can say uh, as far as the precipitation is concerned um, at last we'll have to expose this product for the drying drying and uh, uh, testing and further packaging so as far as the recovery and purification step is concerned uh, there are the different types of steps are really involved in the production of the streptomycin which mainly consists of three process now uh, three phases the first phase which is of 1 to 2 days the first step of streptomycin fermentation consist of mycelial growth the proteolytic activity of the streptomyces gracies releases ammonia to the medium from soybean and soybean meal and the ph uh, rises to about 7.6 due to the production of ammonia the glucose of the medium is slowly utilized with slight production of the streptomycin in case of phase 2 in this phase that is 1 to 3 days the production of streptomycin increases at a faster rate without growth of any new mycelium the large quantities of this glu glucose and the oxygen are required and ammonia is utilized here the ph remains fairly cons constant in the range of 7.4 to 7.8 in case of phase 3 this is the last phase actually so sugar has been depleted here from the medium and reduces the streptomycin production the cells are lysed which then it releases the ammonia and you can say the uh, rapid increase in the ph was observed the streptomycin is also isolated before the third phase so this is all about the uh, production with concern uh, with your uh, different types of the phases as far as the recovery is concerned the streptomycin is recovered by different methods depending on the particular fermentation industry so the fermentation broth is acidified filter and neutralized it is then passed through a column containing a cation exchange resin to absorb the streptomycin from the broth the column is washed with water and streptomycin diluted with the hydrochloric acid before concentration the streptomycin 
is dissolved in methanol and filter acetone is added to the filtrate to precipitate the antibiotic and finally the precipitate is washed with acetone and dissolved in methanol for the preparation as a pure streptomycin calcium chloride complex next is your tetracycline production tetracycline are the broad spectrum antibiotics mainly active against the gram positive and gram negative bacteria rickettsia and some large viruses their antibiotics are produced mainly by streptomyces aureofacens and streptomyces rhamnosus aureomycin that is chlorotetracycline is discovered by the uh, duggar in the year of 1948 which was produced by the fermentation of streptomycin streptomyces aureofacens oxytetracycline uh, was produced by fermentation of streptomyces rhamnosus rhamnosus and uh, the streptomyces aureofacens which containing the different types of derivatives are used for the industrial production of tetracyclines too the stock culture are maintained for the longer period in the form of lyophilized spores or at liquid nitrogen temperature as spore stock this tetracycline antibiotic yield can be improved by some mutagens like uv light x-ray gamma radiation ethylenamine and nitrogen mustards alone or in combinations as far as inoculum development is concerned the medium used for the inoculum development contains the carbohydrate containing sucrose and maltose having the concentration 2.5 percent then corn strip liquor 1.7 percent calcium carbonate 1 percent sodium uh, sorry Uh, ammonium diammonium sulfate uh, 0.2 percent and other inorganic um, salts and minerals too. The composition of the inoculation media is made similar to the fermentation media to ensure short lag phase. The different steps in the inoculum development of the state tetracycline, which responsible for the is production uh, of the quality product. the culture is monitored for the temperature ph residual sugar carbon dioxide biomass etc optimum yield is obtained from the medium containing inoculum for 24 hours as far as the inoculum preparation for the tetracycline preparation is concerned first of all we have to take the freeze dried -right culture that is stock which we have to expose it for the 7 to 10 days for the preparation of the first porulation with the help of a gas lamp after 7 to 10 days the second porulation was prepared with the help of mylite flask we have to expose this broth for the inoculation purpose in a sense of 10 rest to 11 spores per meter cube after the successful preparation of the submerged culture the pre that is pre inoculation tank process after exposure with the 5% volume of pre inoculation broth the second submerged culture is going to used or prepared in inoculation tank when we expose this broth for the 5 to 10% volume of inoculation broth the production culture is formed in the fermentation tank the fermentation process actually which consist of the tetracycline are obtained by the submerged culture technique a typical uh, medium for the production of tetracycline by the fermentation contains the uh, different types of carbon sources which contain the sucrose dextrose cornstarch uh, then uh, vegetable oils nitrogen sources containing constip liquor soybean meal peanut meal inorganic salts contain magnesium sulfate zinc sulfate sodium chloride etc these lactose and saccharose uh, are not used by the streptomyces species actually uh, where in case of animal and vegetable oils are used as anti foaming agents as well as the carbon sources this calcium carbonate helps in the maintaining the ph and also binds with the antibiotics hence it prevents from product inoculation uh, accumulation and inhibition of the product formation the fermentation is conducted at 28 degree 
to 30 degrees Celsius at pH 6 to 6.5 and aeration level it has to be maintained for 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 volume of air per volume of liquid per minute. This fermentation process may be batch or semi uh, you can say the semi continuous type the yield of antibiotics which depends upon the pH age of inoculum and composition of the medium and at last the aeration of the culture is also very very important for the biosynthesis of the antibiotic as far as the product recovery is concerned this tetracycline is obtained from the filtrate of the acidic medium by adsorption on diatomaceous earth or activated charcoal it is precipitated in the form of salts with metals of alkaline earth extraction is carried out from the broth with one butanol or in addition of the carrier that is quaternary ammonium compounds tetracycline forms the complex salt with the divalent calcium and magnesium it is purified by the crystallization as salts or bases from boiling solvents like lower alcohol and ketone etc next is your vitamin b2 that is riboflavin riboflavin is an important water soluble vitamin essential uh, uh, for the growth and reproduction in man and animals kuhan georgi and wagner george in 1933 isolated the riboflavin from whey of milk it was first isolated uh, from milk and then prepared by fermentation in the year of somehow 1935 it is also present in other foods as flavor proteins which contain the prosthetic group flavin mononucleotide that is fmn or flavin adenine dinucleotide that is fad chemically this riboflavin is an the aloxazine derivative which consists of the pteridine ring condensed to a benzene ring this riboflavin is prepared by the fermentation process as well as uh, by a synthetic method too it is produced by the number of microorganisms which include uh, some bacteria that is clostridium butyricum then uh, you can say the uh, clostridium acetobutylicum clostridium felsinium mycobacterium smeg smegmatis then aerobacter aerogens uh, yeast which also been used for the production of this riboflavin include candida arborea candida flareri saccharomyces species and is like fungi ascomycetes that is areomothesium ashibai and ashibai gossipi so these are the different types of uh, the uh, raw material have been used uh, for the preparation of the uh, the this uh, process uh, so for the fermentation process of this uh, riboflavin which mainly contain the carbon source that is sucrose glucose and maltose uh, is used uh, nitrogen sources which contain the corn strip liquor pepton other nutrient uh, which contain the soybean and glycine to produce maximum yield of riboflavin from ashabai gossipi inoculum were used as prepared from uh, slants or the spores of the particular culture and further produced from the two fermentation tanks a lab culture of ashabai gossipi inoculated into the sterilized medium at 28 degrees celsius and ph was maintained around 6.8 for the four to five days under the aerobic condition not only this but also aeration rate was also maintained in the uh, range of 0 0.25 to 0 0.30 volume of air per volume of medium per minute excess aeration not suitable for the uh, growth of cells uh, because it inhibits the mycelial production and reduces the yield as far as the different types of phases are concerned uh, the uh, production of the riboflamine which mainly contain the uh, aeration rate of uh, you can say um, we have to maintain uh, for the satisfactory 
uh, of the maximum yield the fermentation progresses through the four phases the first phase it is the initial uh, and rapid growth phase you can say of ashe by gocp in this phase the glucose is utilized and decreases the ph due to the accumulation of the pyruvic acid in second phase uh, in this phase this sporulation occurs and this phase is called as production phase ammonia in the medium accumulates that is dmnase activity and increases the ph in third phase the uh, which characterized by the synthesis of cell bound riboflavin in the form of flavin adenine dinucleotide that is fad and flavin mononucleotide that is fmn this phase is accompanied by the rapid increases uh, rapid increase in catalase activity and subsequently cytochromes disappears in case of fourth phase the free riboflavin is released into the medium due to the autolysis of the cells this uh, allows the release of fad and fmn and free riboflavin into the medium so this is all about the production of uh, uh, vitamin b2 uh, the uh, each and every step uh, for the production of vitamin b2 is uh, depicted in this figure mainly at initial level we will have to mix together the different types of the raw material which consist of mainly glucose animal stick liquor then uh, corn stick liquor soybean oil sulfuric acid etc will have to mix together in a mixing tank with the help of sperger we have to expose it for the appropriate sterilization process with the help of steam this is a sterilizer with the help of this uh, raw materials can be sterilized wherein you will able to uh, see the water out and water in uh, inlet and outlet that is and the sterilization process is going to maintain as far as the cooling uh, uh sensation or maintenance of these uh, vessel uh, is maintained with the help of water then after this broth we have to expose it for, for the uh, actual fermentation technique wherein the uh, acidity um, it has been reduced uh, by uh, increasing the basicity of this production broth uh, with the help of uh, caustic soda and uh, not only this but also the culture of ashmi gossipy is simultaneously also uh, mixed into the uh, fermentation tank wherein the uh, with the help of air compressor with the help of air filter we have to maintain the uh, viability or you can say the reproducibility even uh, for the production of these uh, vitamin b2 after the successful cycle of this fermentation the extraction that is in the form of broth we have to expose it for the acidification so with the help of particular acid we have to used uh, sorry we have to maintain the acidic ph and uh, uh, next step is your evaporation process wherein the different types of um uh, volatile solvents or you can say the organic solvents you have used it will be evaporated with the help of uh, um, evaporator um, so appropriate steaming is done and at last the broth we have to expose for the drum dye to get the vitamin b2 as far as the recovery is concerned this riboflavin is present in solution as well as bound form to the mycelium acetone petroleum ether and butanol are used for the extraction of this riboflavin from fermentation broth it is precipitated by using reducing agents as hydrosulfide and finally divided diatomaceous earth next production is your uh, vitamin b12 that is cobalamin so vitamin b12 is a water soluble vitamin commonly known as cobalamin it is an important dietary component for the normal growth in human beings and animals 
Rike E. L. and Smith L. in the year of somehow 1948 was successfully isolated the small amount of active material from the liver and crystallized it as vitamin B12 which was active in the treatment of pernicious anemia. So vitamin B12 is one of the largest and the most complex molecule. The main part in the structure of vitamin B12 is porphyrin ring containing cobalt as the central element. The cyanide that is CN group, hydroxyl group or nitride group attached to the cobalt is called as cyanocobalamin that is vitamin B12, hydroxycobalamin and nitrocobalamin respectively. Vitamin B12 is produced by bacteria and actinomycetes. Streptomyces, olivaceous, pseudomonas, denutrificants, then propionibacterium shermani and propionibacterium frodin ricci are mainly used for the commercial production of vitamin B12. Generally, vitamin B12 is prepared by the submerged culture process. This production of vitamin B12 from Streptomyces olivaceus is really depicted there in the uh, this flow chart. As far as the uh, inoculum development is concerned, the pure culture of Streptomyces olivaceus is inoculated in the inoculum medium which containing Ilanmere flask. Bennett's broth which consists of yeast extract having concentration 0.1%, beef extract having concentration 0.1% and glucose 1% and at last enzymatic hydrolysates of casein having concentration 0.25% is employed for the development of inoculum. The flasks are kept on the mechanical shaker during the incubation for the aeration. This flask culture are used to inoculate the large amount of inoculum medium and required amount of inoculum that is 5% of the volume of production medium is prepared by successive transfer. As far as the flowchart of this production of vitamin B12 is concerned, the culture of Streptomyces olivaceus is grown with the aeration at 28 degrees Celsius in nutritionally rich crude medium distiller soluble 4% dextrose 1% and calcium carbonate 0.5% are mainly present in typical production medium used in the production of vitamin b12 cobalt chloride at approximately 2 to 10 ppm is added to this medium as a precursor not only this the a pH of the medium is adjusted to around neutrality that is 7 to 7.5 before sterilization and may or may not be controlled during the fermentation. In the first 24 hours, the pH of fermentation is reduced due to the rapid sugar consumption and again pH increases after 48 to 96 hours due to lysis of mycelium. The change in pH sugar and production of vitamin B12 during typical fermentation process. A, cor a correct rate of aeration and speed of agitation are required for proper growth of microbial strain. The optimum rate of aeration is about 0.5 volume air per volume medium per minute. Soybean oil, corn oil, lard oil, etc. are used as anti-forming agent to suppress the uh, foam uh, formation. So with this fashion, we have to design this in control and uh, what you can say the in internal control as well as the external control for the ease production of quality uh, vitamin B12. So after the filtration, we ex we have to expose this broth for the extraction purpose by the treatment of aqueous or the solvents. After the treatment of these uh, aqueous or the solvent system, after extraction, the extract that is nothing but the crude vitamin. Uh, so, this 
along with the sail debris the crude uh, vitamin you will get so this crude vitamin it is once again exposed for the chromatographic technique for the separation of uh, sail debris some uh, different types of uh, uh, you can say the uh, intermediates or the intermediate product uh, you uh, you can say and uh, oh yeah obviously your uh, own product that is your vitamin uh, a pure vitamin that is b12 so with the help of chromatography and solvent precipitation method and required uh, drum drying technique the pure vitamin b12 is eventually uh, got form so as far as the uh, product recovery of the vitamin b12 is concerned so it is mainly associated with the uh, mycelium of uh, centri sorry mycelium of streptomyces species uh, most of the cobalamin is recovered with the mycelium by uh, centrifuging or uh, filtering you can say uh, the whole beer after 3 to 4 days concentrated vitamin b12 is also obtained by reducing the ph of this beer to 5 with sulfuric acid and heating the mixtures to boiling sodium sulfite uh, which having the concentration around 100 ppm uh, may be added in the mixtures for the production of uh, vitamin uh, the medium is filtered to remove the mycelium and then the filtrate broth is treated with cyanide to convert the cobalamin uh, to cyanocobalamin the adsorption of the cyanocobalamin from the solution is done by using the activated charcoal fuller's earth bentonite etc finally elution uh, of cyanocobalamin is performed uh, by using an aqueous solution of materials ranging from organic bases to hydrochloric acid the single step extraction into an organic solvent or counter current extraction and product purification is carried out by the process of precipitation and at last the chromatography on alumina and final crystallization from ethanol acetone is performed the final uh, product is drum dried or spray dried the vitamin b12 contain may vary from 10 to 30 microgram per liter in the final product uh, so in a such a way that these uh, production of cyanocobalamin uh, is takes place uh next is uh, 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 we are uh, at the uh, concluding mode Uh, the antibiotics and certain vitamins are the most important class of pharmaceuticals produced by the microbial biotechnological processes as a secondary metabolites these antibiotics are the most important as antimicrobial agents for the chemotherapy these antibiotics produced by the microbial fermentation or chemical synthesis or a combination of both the basic molecule of antibiotics may be produced by the fermentation and its therapeutic value can be increased by chemical modifications the microorganisms can be successfully used for the commercial production of vitamins these vitamins are organic compounds that are used for the normal maintenance and optimal growth of organisms example thymine riboflavin vitamin b12 ascorbic acid pro vitamin a etc this is all about the production of uh, some examples we have taken uh, as far as antibiotics and vitamins are concerned but in your syllabus there is only the one example each from antibiotic and the vitamins you will have to just uh, make it learn and understand the concept uh, behind the fermentation technology as far as the manufacturing of uh, vitamins and the antibiotics are concerned uh, 
as far as uh, next part is concerned mainly with your uh, downstream processing which is the main part actually the student um, uh, used to uh, just uh, uh, keep in on the option form that is downstream processing actually the uh, downstream processing which mainly consists of or you can say this DSP which may depend upon the isolation or separation of the biological active agents from a cell culture supernatant is one of the critical part of the manufacturing biotech products you can say M moreover the design and scale up are two important stages of the downstream process separating the impurities from the product requires a series of purification steps that is process design and bringing the product in final stage as per the specification after purification the formulation and sterilization are performed on the bulk product in order to obtain the final product scale up is the term used to describe uh, you can say a number of uh, process employed in converting the laboratory procedure into the pilot plant economical and industrial process the main objective of this scale up is to uh, produce a product of high quality at a least price that every uh, formulator has expected uh, this strategy this fermentation utilizes the different types of raw materials that may be converted into a variety of products fermentation industry produces the varying amount and wide range of the waste materials the waste includes the salts and organic matters from the spent uh, media, cell contents, waste waters, traces of solvents, acids, alkalis, etc. Environmental Pollution Control Act, that is EPCA, does not permit the disposal of waste without any treatment. If the fermentation process employs plant or the animal pathogens, the waste is required to be sterilized before its treatment and all waste are treated in the municipal sewage treatment plant or in its own effluent treatment plant these industrial waters mainly contain the organic compound and it oxidize completely into carbon dioxide and water mainly this uh, downstream process actually in your examination the downstream processing is the uh, one part actually you have been asked for but uh, uh, this is for your um, what you can say for the n sake of knowledge only I am just going to um, flash on the downstream process okay so harvesting purification and final processing of fermentation product in suitable dosage form for its intended use after the completion of fermentation it's called as downstream processing so this is very easy ex uh, definition of the downstream processing actually students getting uh, so much confusion or get the confusion there in the two terminology that is upstream and the downstream processing so it is very easy actually to get in so the downstream process involves the three major stages that is separation of cells from fermentation broth second is isolation of impure product and at last that is purification and final processing of product so the product formed by the fermentation can be intracellular or it may be your extracellular too and heat stable as well as well as sensitive hence downstream process is designed by considering many factors to achieve the pure isolated product with least cost the selection of the specific processes depends on the different types of the factors so mainly named as first is your product location that is extracellular or either intracellular second factor will be your product sensitivity third factor will be your concentration of product or possible yield fourth one uh, it will be based on your properties and the use of product then sixth one is your acceptable standard of product then uh, sorry uh, then possible impurities 
and at last is your economy of process and market price product so when we talk regarding the stages of the uh, downstream processing no so very first stage is your fermentation broth so there is no requirement of actually these downstream processing it is actually the part which is related with your upstream processing student is always getting conf get confused themselves uh, with respect to these upstream and downstream as i already told you but where in case of the first stage very very first stage of uh, your fermentation it is started with your upstream processing that is fermentation broth preparation but uh, this first stage which is followed by second one that is pre treatment from this point onward uh, till your product will be there in your hand so till that moment from this point of second stage of this fermentation process the downstream processing is actually been carried out so second stage of this downstream processing is your pre treatment the dsp parameter related with the pre treatments are stabilization uh, then flocculation adjustment of ph then cell disruption the third stage which consists of separation that is separation phase you can say so it mainly consist of the dsp parameter like filtration sedimentation and centrifugation where in case of fourth stage where you have to always opt for the concentration that is uh, uh, dsp parameters to carried out here is evaporation precipitation and extraction then fifth stage is uh, your purification stage where this purification Mm, is carried out with the help of crystallization some chromatographic technique some adsorption technique some extraction technique and at last precipitation technique and very last at last you can say the formulation when when we talk regarding then that time the dsp process which mainly consists of drying then a uh, selection of dosage form optimization of additives and uh, then uh, obviously uh, the product which we have to transform into the uh, suitable dosage form in the form of tablet in the form of capsules in the form of injectables in the form of semi solids so this is all about the classification of uh, the downstream process or in simple manner you can say these are the major stages of downstream processing so this is all about the uh, downstream processing parameter uh, there are the different types of seal separational techniques are also there uh, actually uh, uh, in case of your pre treatment uh, which will be the first step of your dsp and second stage of your whole fermentation process so this pre treatment uh, which uh, i have just told you that uh, the dsp parameter which mainly consists of stabilization flocculation adjustment of ph cell disruption so out of these four this cell disruption it's really been carried out uh, by means of two method one is mechanical method and second one is your non mechanical method in mechanical method the three uh, steps are um, mm, mainly involved in the mechanical method actually the first one is homogenizer then agitation with abrasives and ultrasonification whereas in case of non mechanical method there are three methods are involved first one is physical shock example is heat then chemical method examples are detergents solvents and osmotic shock and at last that is your enzymic Uh, sorry enzymatic uh, method as far as the third stage of your downstream processing is concerned that is separation which i have told you that the dsp parameter concerned with the third step of the dsp mainly is separation which consists of filtration sedimentation and centrifugation so as far as the separation the uh, centrifugation is concerned here so centrifugation is also going to be carried out with the help of two actually centrifugation one which is based on laboratory and uh, one which is based on your industrial or sedimentation centrifugation so as far as laboratory centrifuges can sin there are three uh, different centrifuges are used 
that is small table centrifuge and high speed chilled centrifuge and ultra centrifuge where in case of industrial or sedimentation centrifuge there are the three different uh, centrifuge are uh, useful that is decanter disk stack and tubular centrifuge as per as your concentration uh, which will be your fourth step of the um, downstream processing is concerned which mainly depend upon the three different factor of dsp that is evaporation precipitation and extraction so extraction is uh, is commonly applied in large scale fermentation for uh, concentration and purification uh, not only this but uh, solubility and polarity uh, of the product plays a major role in the selection of solvent for the extraction and uh, multi stage extraction or the counter current extraction is also employed with the high extraction yield so mixer settlers columns and anti fungal uh, sorry centrifugal uh, extractors are commonly used for the extraction solvents used for the extractions are expensive hence all solvents are recovered and recirculated in the extraction process so when we talk regarding the dsp so this is your uh, you can say the um, which is actually the second part of your um, whole uh, what we can say the fermentation process where we uh, stare at the pre treatment so from the pre treatment to the formulation so these are total uh, five methods or the steps you can say uh, there is uh, compresses in the downstream processing where the dsp has started its own role uh, with the different types of the step like pre treatment separation concentration purification and at last your formulation so the antibiotic proteins and uh, enzymes are uh, really uh, formulated as solution suspension or as dry powders so stabilizers such as ammonium sulfate salt sorbitol glycerol pg etc are added in these preparations so depending on the dosage form different other additives are also added in the final formulation example diluents lubricating agent suspending agent emulsifying agent coloring agent etc so drying is the most essential step mainly for the um, protein products so contract dyers sorry uh, contact dryers you can say example drum dryer convection dryer example spray dryer or uh, you can say fluidized dryer and radiation dryer which include uh, your freeze dryer are commonly used for the drying the final product so the antibiotics are packed in sterile vials as a powder or suspension for uh, parenteral or uh, oral use so they may be formulated as film coated tablet estimation of the fermentation product uh, is uh, necessary during the drying in downstream processing and uh, at the end of the process gravimetry spectrophotometry specific gravity optical density packed cell volume uh, then uh, you can say total viable count measurements of cell components counting chambers and chromatography are the common method actually which are been used for the estimation of fermentation uh, products and uh, whereas uh, indeed uh, the quality control of the fermentation products is uh, done during the process and the finish final product during the downstream processing the efficiency of the unit operations is uh, determined by the product evaluation at each step so the quality assurance or the quality control test for the fermentation products include uh, different types of sterility testing yeah obviously uh, then uh, pyrogen testing uh then toxicity testing then uh, you can say the allergy testing microbiological uh, assays and uh, carcinogenicity testing it must satisfy all government standards before being marketed so this is uh, all about the downstream processing and uh, certain aspect 
related with the quality control and the quality assurance actually this presentation is basically related with the manufacturing aspect of uh, some product related with the antibiotics and uh, some uh, some of uh, vitamins but uh, due to the time constraint uh, i have some of the uh, basic downstream processing uh, uh, its step as well as uh, different quality control and quality uh, assurance uh, test which are really or you can say must satisfy the uh, all government uh, standards before being marketed so uh, this is all about the manufacturing of vitamins and uh, antibiotics so this is the end of your 10th uh, chapter so earlier we had seen the fermentation technology the the basic very basic concept related with the types of different fermenters and the components used therein and uh, dsp also so but i have tried my level best to cover the downstream processing parameters here in this presentation as well so in next presentations we'll see the next chapter that is seventh one so um, thank you very much so soon we'll going to try to cover your uh, whole uh, revision uh, as uh, though your examination has got cancelled uh, but uh, as far as uh, knowledge is concerned as far as your uh, hence forth or the put forth uh, examination is concerned based on your gpat and all competitive examination so it will be quite helpful to you people though the weightage of the biotechs would be quite lesser as compared to other subject but uh, yeah obviously as far as the knowledge is concerned uh, you will not be uh, back behind okay so thank you so much